Okay, hello everybody, welcome back. Um, so this is part two of, I mean, sorry, part three of today's video, May 14th of 2020. So in part two, we just finished reviewing unit seven, okay? So in part three, uh, since we're done with unit seven, we're going to begin reviewing unit eight. So the first thing we learned um, in unit eight uh, was about occupation. And occupation means same thing as a jo uh, as job. And then so we learned uh, uh, some names of the occupations that a person could have, uh, where that person could work at with that occupation, and what kind of skills that they would have for that occupation. So we have name, places, and skills. First, let's go over um, some of the occupations. So we have a teacher, a firefighter, a cashier, a server, a doctor, a librarian, an auto mechanic, and finally, a lawyer. So, uh, and then, based on each occupation, where do they work at? A teacher works at a school, a firefighter works at a fire station, a cashier works at a supermarket, a server works at a restaurant. A doctor works at a hospital. A librarian works at a library. An auto mechanic works at an arm shop. A lawyer works at a court. And then based on each occupation, we should know what their skills are job skills, right? A teacher can teach students. A firefighter can put out fires. A cashier can check out customers. A server can take orders. A doctor can treat patients. A librarian can take care of books. An auto mechanic can fix cars. A lawyer can defend and advise clients. So each occupation um, has their has its own uh, respects respective place to um, place for work and their respective skills. And then, so the reason um, I'm talking about the names of the occupation, uh, the places and skills is because we use this, well not the name, but we use the places and skills to identify a person's, um, to identify a person's occupation. So for example, if I'm at a school, and I see a person uh, teaching students using, uh, using a whiteboard and using a textbook, then I can safely assume that, oh, that person is a teacher, right? Because I don't expect a, uh, a principal teaching students in classroom. No, it, it's a teacher that's teaching uh, students in a classroom setting. And now, uh, here, a server, so we're at a restaurant, and this person is taking my order for the food. And then, I can safely assume, because we're in a restaurant, and this person is t trying to take orders from me, I can assume that that person's occupation is a server. So we look for hints when we're looking at when we're trying to identify an occupation. And another 
uh, way of uh, um, so we I just said we so in order to identify as a person um, occupation without talking but only based on observation is uh, the place that they work at or the skills that they have and finally attire what they're wearing so um, so attire means uh, it's the same thing as clothing but uh, this doesn't always work but uh, it only works for a certain specific occupation for example let's talk about a doctor right a doctor usually wears a white coat or they they wear a something called scrubs here scrubs so so they usually uh, so scrubs are I mean is a uh, are attire for um, as clothing that they wear uh, for surgery so when they're when they're actually tr trying to um, do surgery on a patient white coat is, is in general that's how they uh, what they wear in a hospital so they have a so doctor um, they usually have a specific attire that they wear um, during their job so for example another example would be uh, easy example would be a firefighter and a police officer right a police officer usually for their occupation they would usually carry a gun so and then they would be wearing a uniform right there's a police uniform and then there's a uniform for firefighter right um, so we are able to identify oh that person is a police officer because he's carrying a gun or he's carrying a cuff and then he's riding in a police car or um, he's um, wearing that blue uniform All right. so in or order to identify an occupation as a person's occupation based on just an observation we have to look at the surrounding uh, surrounding meaning the objects around that person or uh, the objects that they're using or uh, the place that they're at and then the skills that um, they're performing so a police officer would be trying to arrest a robber or, or um, trying to protect the citizen a uh, teacher as I said before a teacher is going to teach students in the classroom setting so if an adult is uh, in a classroom is talking to students or uh, oh, let's make this a high school sorry high school setting so at a high school we have these young kids and an adult in a classroom setting and you know, this adult is uh, saying something to these students while using a whiteboard then we can safely assume that that person's occupation is a teacher so we have to use all these hints Okay, because sometimes it's very difficult to identify a certain occupation. Um, so, uh, right, and then, so this, we tell them occupation, and now we're going to um, talk about um, certain grammar that we talked about, and it was was and were. Okay. Okay. So after we learn about um, identifying some common uh, occupations or jobs, um, we talked about simple uh, past of B. So here I drew a timeline. So we have past, present, present means right now, and the future. So I wrote 2020 present right now. So what we learned was, uh, was uh, about using um, the B verb was and were and the B verb was and were here for simple passive B is we're talking about everything in the past so from here all the way to here so everything before present right now so this area this area 
And in order to use was and were, um, we want to use uh, pronouns as I, he, she, and it for was. And then we want to use uh, for were, we want to use you, we, and they. And then so the state, we can make statements and questions, but we're going to um, talk about the statements first. So we're going to make a statement about the past. So for example, here, I was sick last weekend. I was sick last weekend. So I'm talking about the past and I'm, I'm making a statement saying I was sick last weekend. So if this is now, last weekend would be included here somewhere and I was sick, right? Another one, she was at the library yesterday. So we have today, uh, tomorrow, and yesterday. And here, she was, so the, the B verb here is going to be was, the, since the, uh, the, uh, the subject pronoun is uh, she. So she was at the library yesterday, and yesterday is also talking about the past. So was and were is about the past. And then finally, they were in Paris. They were in Paris. So here, I didn't mention the exact time. So here I said the last weekend and yesterday, but here they were in Paris. So it did happen in the past, but I don't know when exactly, but this is still a statement. They were in Paris, but they're not in Paris anymore. Right now, they're not in Paris. So you're able to make a statement um, using the beaver like this. And then we can also ask questions. And then when we form a question, is um, we're asking for some kind of description. Or uh, for this case, it would be yes or no question. So in order to make a question with the B verb, we have to uh, we have this rule. So we have B verb here plus subject, and I say plus other. Uh, the reason I put other is uh, it really depends on what kind of sentences you're trying to form or question. So here is this the um, other case, and then uh, when we're making a question as well, uh, the the pronouns that we use will determine uh, what. Uh, uh, be verb that we're going to use. So here I said we, so we have to use were. So were we about to buy this car? Were we about to buy this car? So here is the be verb and subject is we. And then this is the other part. Were we about to buy this car? Now let's go to the next one. Was he a construction worker before? So, was he? So, he is here, so we have to use was. Was he a construction worker before? So, this is a, just a simple noun. Was he a construction worker before? So, here is more simpler than this one because here is talking about all the actions. So where we, it was actually talking about action of doing something. So this is just talking about uh, that person. Um, okay, so uh, so were we about to buy this car? So I'm not, they're talking about this action that I'm talking about, action. So uh, and here is just a, uh, how do I say this? Was he a construction worker before? So it's talking about occupation, it's a, but it's not talking about action. So it could be a various, um, uh, so this, I mean, it, when we're looking at these two questions, um, this would be way simpler because it's just asking about, no, that's a bad way of saying it. Uh, uh, anyway, so, uh, in order to make a question using um, the passive B, uh, the simple passive B verb, 
this is how you're supposed to do. The ending here, um, were we about to buy this car? Was he a construction worker before? Um, these, it's different, uh, it's asking different questions, so uh, that's why I put other. But they are um, basically uh, yes or no questions. So here, so were we about to buy this car? Yes, then I would say yes. Yes, uh, since the subject is we, so yes, we were. And if we're, we're not gonna say, uh, if it was a no, then we say no, we weren't. And for here, was he a construction worker before? Oh, yes, he was. Or no, he wasn't. And you could add something extra. So was he a construction worker before? And if it's a no, no, he wasn't. And then you can say he is. So when we, so here is simple, simple pass a B. But for, if we talking about right now, we want to use is. For present so it could be uh, but now so or let's okay let's go with this yes so was he a construction worker before yes he was but right now he is he is a teacher a teacher um, so um, if we're talking about the anything before um, the, the present, so anything in the past, we want to use the simple passive of B, was and were, to ask questions and make statements, okay? Um, I hope that was helpful, and that will be it for uh, part three of today's video. Thanks for watching.